guys! Welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. This is our fourth recipe in our four week holiday series. And tonight we are going to be making candy. But it's going to be very simple. You don't even need a candy thermometer. So tonight we're going to be making sugar free English toffee. So come along and let's get started. So English toffee is kind of a misnomer because it's not really English. In fact, if you ask for English toffee in the UK, you will not find it. In Great Britain, it is called butter crunch. But this particular type of confection has been around since about 1825, and food historians generally think that it might be stemming from a Creole word toffee meaning molasses and sugar. So it has been around for a long time, but it's been known by different names. Regardless, it is a very yummy, buttery, crunchy type of candy, and it's generally coated with chocolate and has some kind of nut in it. Sometimes it's pecans, sometimes it's almonds, but tonight we're going to be making a sugar-free version. So let's go ahead and get started. So to begin our candy, we are going to start with a medium-sized saucepan, and mine is three quarts. And to that, we are going to add a half a cup of butter, which is one stick. And we need to let this butter melt. So you want your temperature probably medium. And as soon as this butter has melted, we are going to add our sweetener and let our sweetener get well combined and dissolved in there and then we'll bring it up to a low boil in order to bring our candy to that hard crack stage. You do not need a candy thermometer with this, you just need to watch it and once our, our sweetener is dissolved we're not going to stir it and that is going to give us that hard crack toffee that we're looking for. So it's more about watching so our butter is melting. So we are going to go ahead and add our sweetener. Now this recipe, <clears throat> it calls for using erythritol. Swerve is generally the brand name. Um, sometimes you can even find Swerve locally nowadays. But I'm just using the So Nourished Erythritol because it's the exact same thing. It's just the generic brand and you want the granular and we're going to be using about three quarters of a cup of that so we need to go ahead and pour that in and stir while the butter is melting so that we can get our sweetener dissolving into the butter because we really want it dissolved really well because it is granular So. Let our butter get melty in here. Okay, our butter and our sweetener are starting to dissolve, which is what we want. I'm just stirring at this point to make sure that our sweetener and our butter are well combined into each other before we start letting it come to the low boil to form candy. Okay, everything is dissolved. Now we're going to bring this to a low boil. And this is gonna be the part where it turns into toffee. So we're gonna wait for this to start to bubble. And then we'll set our timer. You're gonna to wanna to let it bubble, cook, for about five minutes, uh, maybe less, depending on 
the quality of your cookware, basically, depending on how thick the bottom of your cookware is, is, is going to help you determine how long you're going to let this do a low boil. This recipe does not take a long time, but you do have to be patient with this process because you don't want your candy to scorch. Okay, it's starting to boil now, which is what we want. I'm gonna set my timer. And it's really difficult at this point to keep your hands off, but that's important because it is the boiling without being stirred that is going to form the crystallization of our English toffee. And as it low boils, the butter is going to change from that light yellow color that butter usually is, and it's going to take on that amber, that deep amber color of toffee. So mine has been cooking about four minutes so far. It is starting to turn the color that we are looking for. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm going to remove it to the other side. Now off the burner, I'm going to add two ingredients. And that is a little bit of sea salt and it's going to kind of whoosh and see that it bubbles. And I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. And watch out for that step. It's just like chemistry. But it's supposed to do that. So then we are going to put our hot toffee mixture into, I have an eight by eight foil lined pan here. And we're going to let it cool and harden. And then we will do our next steps. So you just want to give that just a little bit of a stir since we added our salt and vanilla. And you can see that it's a beautiful amber color. <clears throat> And we're just going to pour that into our pan. And we are going to let this cool and harden. Okay, so our toffee has cooled and hardened. And now we're going to do one additional step. We are going to take chocolate chips, and we need about a half a cup. And I am going to be using the Lily's brand chocolate chips, and these are dark. They only come in dark 
I'm going to add just a tiny bit of cream to mine though to make the ganache on top and about a teaspoon of butter. And I'm going to microwave mine. You absolutely could use a double boiler if you wanted to. That is um, a pan of simmering water with another bowl on top and then it's just to me a more tedious process but if you don't have a microwave you could absolutely do that. And I'm going to probably put maybe a tablespoon of cream in there just to give it some viscosity and I'm going to microwave this in intervals until it starts to melt. Now if you cannot find Lily's chips you could use a um, cut up sugar-free candy bar you could um, Hershey's makes sugar-free chips they do have maltitol in them but if you cannot find anything else you know this time of year it's about some slight indulgences versus eating actual sugar so I heated mine for about 40 seconds and you can see that it's not quite melted yet. There's still a little bit of actual chip looking chunks in there. So I'm going to take it for another 30 seconds. So it has melted. So I'm just going to carefully spread that across my cooling toffee. Trying to get as thin a layer as I can. are going to put this back in a cooling condition. You can do it on your countertop, you can put it in the refrigerator, but after you put the cho chocolate on it, the best if you can refrigerate it for a little while. Just to really harden everything up. And it's the toffee itself is releasing a little bit of its residual butter, which is totally normal. And then to finish this off, I am just going to put a few chopped pecans on top just to make it look fancy. And these are just my homemade roasted, better roasted pecans. The recipe is on our blog. Because once you roast your own pecans, there's just no going back. You could absolutely use almonds if you prefer. <clears throat> or you can omit the nuts altogether if you don't care for nuts or you're allergic. Okay, so there we go. And we're going to pop that into the refrigerator and let it fully harden. And then we will cut it up and let CJ have a taste. Okay, for the taste test, CJ just had a birthday, and he's always been self-conscious about this mystery bald spot he thinks he has. So he decided to remedy it, for espe especially specifically for this special taste test. So, here he is, folks. Why, hello, handsome. Hi. Why are you smirking like that? Oh, nothing. I was just admiring your strawberry blonde coif. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to be testing this final recipe in our Four Week Holiday series. Uh, sure. Hold on, I got oh. hair. Oh, yes. Brush the hair out of your eyes. Gorgeous. Okay. You're going to be sampling some English toffee. Yes, sugar so this free. is the sugar-free English toffee. Mm -hmm. uh, we had quite a time making this this week. Had hard, hard time find, a hard time finding some of the ingredients we needed. But we did, and um, let's see how this tastes. Hmm. 
You can hear that it's crunchy. That's good. You want it's it to good. Crunchy. It's good. So we made a batch with just the Hershey's sugar-free yes, chocolates. When just because we, we to Whole Foods. Yeah, we were like cleared out. Of yeah, lilies. we couldn't find we couldn't find the Lily's uh, chocolate, and we could definitely ta uh, taste a uh, lot. Uh, it was a lot more sweeter, or a lot sweeter with the um, Hershey's chocolate, uh, which has the uh, what is it, maltitol, mm -hmm. and so it's a lot sweeter. And uh, this is this is really good. I mean, it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. Well, and Lily's is dark chocolate too. That has something to do with mm, it. Cool. But, but still, her chocolate brand is definitely because it's stevia sweetened. It's definitely not as tooth achingly sweet. Yeah. As just yeah. regular sugar free chocolate. So this is this is good. We'll put links for the Lily's chocolate. All the options. That we all can the find. options that we can find, and um, because you could also use a um, sugar free. You could use Baker's chocolate and some yeah. kind of artificial sweetener of yeah. your choice. You, you could. You could yeah. do that as well. So yeah. Or you could just totally leave off the chocolate too. It's completely your That's choice. true. Yeah. That's true. But it's good. I think people will like it. It'd be a nice gift for people. It's very good for gift giving. And I'm giving um, some away tonight. Yeah. We're gonna take some to your parents. So uh, I think people will like will like this and you know it's nice to have a little sweet treat this time of year. And it's uh, pretty. Yeah. It looks nice set out. Yeah. So even for Santa. Yeah, so good job, baby. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you enjoy the candy. It makes a very nice gift. You can put it on a pretty fancy Christmas plate. You could put it in a jar. You could also just leave it out for Santa instead of cookies. But either way, it's very easy, and you're going to love it. So please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We have new recipes every Sunday, and we also have ketogenic conversations on Wednesdays. So we would really like you to come and join us and be a part of our ketogenic family. If you need any macros, full recipes, which are also printable, those are all to be found on our blog, and that's cjsketokitchen.com. We are also on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and we generally post teaser recipes and pictures on both of those sites before our recipes go up on Sunday. So please come back and see us again, and we'll see you next time on CJ's Peter Kitchen.